Holy shit, this movie was fucking awesome. <sighs> okay. Forgive me, guys. Uh, what's up, YouTube? It's Grant F here. I'm still getting over the excitement of after seeing Godzilla 2014, the latest reboot from uh, Warner Brothers and Legendary Pictures, starring Brian Cranston, Aaron Taylor Johnson, and uh, Kent Watanabe, and uh, one of the Olsen tw Elizabeth Olsen, excuse me, uh, the Olsen twins' younger sister, who's much hotter, much more talented than they are. <laughs> But, um, yeah, guys, I just, uh, saw Godzilla in IMAX, uh, 3D, uh, last night, and, uh, I, I just, I finally have calmed down enough to where I can talk about it. Um, I, my insatiable lust for this, uh, film has been building and building and building with every TV spot, every teaser, every trailer. It's just, like, made me salivate at the mouth and made me want to see it even more and, uh, believe the hype. Th this is an awesome awesome reboot of Godzilla and totally uh, true to the character and to the legend of Godzilla. Um, to get into the story of the reboot, um, Gareth Edwards, uh, the director, he's actually uh, coming straight off of another monster film that he did, an indie film called Monsters, uh, which was a really kind of unique, different take on the whole science fiction giant monsters living among us, you know, uh, genre, kaiju genre, I guess. Um, very interesting film to check out. It's on Netflix streaming right now. But uh, Gareth Edwards' Godzilla reboot. Uh, Brian Cranston and his son, Aaron Taylor Johnson, are pretty much the main characters. You, you get the whole story from their point of view. Um, Brian Cranston is uh, like the head engineer at this, um, this physical plant, this um, nuclear power plant in Japan. Um, his family has you know, moved here, and he, this is their job. They live in Japan. His son goes to school in Japan, and him and his wife work at this power plant. Um, there is an incident that happens that completely uh, changes uh, Brian Cranston's character's life. Um, it is an event that uh, leads him down a path of, you know, uh, government cover-ups and uh, conspiracies and him just wanting to know, like, the truth. He's trying to find the truth. Um... This flash forwards many years later where Brian Cranston's son is now a full-grown man and he's uh, joined the Marines and he's become a soldier. He's an um, explosive ordnance disposal uh, expert, EOD. Uh, that's what he does. He disarms bombs. And um, he basically, the story gets going when uh, he comes, he basically comes to Japan because uh, Brian Cranston gets in trouble with the law in Japan. He gets arrested uh, for going into a uh, quarantine zone. And uh, you can tell that over the years that him, uh, him and his father, Brian Cranston and Aaron Taylor Johnson, don't have the best relationship. Like, I, th I think they obviously still love each other, but their relationship has been strained because of this, their, their muddled past, because of this uh, tragedy that happened earlier uh, in the film. And um, Brian, uh, Brian Cranston is just pushing, pushing for the truth to find out what really happened. And the government says that it was, you know this accident was caused by seismic activity or that it was a tsunami or, you know, whatever. They're just spinning it any way they want to spin it. And uh, you come to find out that the government has actually discovered a, uh, a MUTOS, uh, which is a massive, unidentified terrestrial object, or terrestrial organism is what it stands for. And uh, they feed off radiation, they feed off nuclear power, and um, Godzilla was actually discovered, uh, along with the Mutos, years ago back in the 50s. Uh, they nuked it, thought they killed it, but then all of a sudden they've started to resurface. And um, the military and the government is trying to figure out like how to handle this situation. That's another thing I really, really enjoyed about this film was that it handled the situation if all of a sudden these 600, 550 foot tall, you know, creatures were walking around, stomping around, like, how would we handle this? What would we do? What would be the procedures to handle something like this? And they really treat them, they treat these monsters, A, like, I mean, like, they're creatures, they're animals. Really, they don't behave like humans, they behave like animals would. Like, they need food, they need water, they need to reproduce, you know, etc. Um, also, what I really liked about it uh, were the creatures wore... They were like a force of nature. They, you know, 
they would evacuate cities like as if it was like a hurricane or like a natural disaster. Like they, I mean, obviously, yeah, they were creatures, they're animals, but they're they're just like this unstoppable force of nature. And the film really emphasizes that. And Kent Watanabe plays this doctor, Dr. Sirisawa, who is actually named after the Dr. Sirisawa that destroyed, you know, that created the oxygen destroyer in the original Gorgira um, from 1954, which I thought was a pretty cool homage that they kept, you know, the name Dr. Sirisawa in this one. But uh, he, you know, believes that uh, Godzilla is a creature that can restore balance. Like, nature has an order, you know, and... Um, they, uh, the, the fights between Godzilla and these Mutos creatures are just amazing. Like, it, I will say that the first hour is really just uh, story and character development. You really don't see any creatures, or at, le at least Godzilla for like the first like hour, but uh, maybe a little more than that, maybe like an hour and ten minutes. But sh I mean, I was kind of turning to my friend Ryan, and I was just like, man, when is this going to get going? This is like really kind of slowing, you know, slowing down, but you know, if you have patience, it it almost reminds me of like how Steven Spielberg in 1975, when he did not reveal the shark, like he kept it, you know, under the water, like very mur like you couldn't really see it, and then like when you actually do see the shark, it's like oh, like it's just it's a huge payoff, like you just don't expect it, and when you actually finally see Godzilla in his full awesome CGI glory, and he roars. I mean, I got chills. Like I mean, it was just so amazing. Um, I would say that probably my complaints with this film, there's very few complaints, just little small things that they could have done better. I think there were some scenes uh, involving characters where they they would, uh, you know, not really give a story, but they would, like, touch base on something or mention an event from their past life. And it was interesting, but the film, like, kind of went nowhere with, like, those scenes. Like, it's like, why were those scenes in there if they didn't really, you know develop them further so I think probably those scenes could have been cut out could have been trimmed down like maybe five or ten minutes uh, also uh, one of the main characters Aaron Taylor Johnson you know he plays a you know an EOD soldier um, he's very kind of stiff and like you know simplify get it done like you know um, not really um, I don't know there are scenes between him and Brian Cranston where he does emote and he does get a little bit emotional but for the most part his character is just kind of flat um, I, you know, and he did the best that, that what he could with the material that he was given, like the dialogue and the the script that he was given with. I mean, I don't think Aaron Taylor Johnson is a bad actor by any means, but um, his character in the film is just kind of forgettable. Um, I really wanted to see more of Elizabeth Olsen. I kind of felt that she needed to be more in the movie. Same thing with Brian Cranston. He was only in the movie for like half of it, and uh, I really, really wish that they would have kept him more in it because Brian Cranston is such an amazing actor. I think him and Ken Watanabe were the two, like, best actors in the film. Um, yeah, th those were really, really my only complaints. Um, I don't want to talk too much more about the movie because I don't want to spoil it. I want you guys to go check this shit out. It's awesome. Um, I'm going to see it again for sure. Um, I absolutely love the new remake of Godzilla, the new reboot, reimagining or whatever of Godzilla. Um, way, 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 way fucking better than that 1998 fucking colossal turd. Oh, God, look, why, why that film even exists is just beyond me. But, uh, yeah, guys, that is my review for the new Godzilla. Uh, definitely my highly, most highly anticipated uh, film of the year, uh, film of the summer, uh, right behind X-Men Days of Future Past, which next weekend I will definitely put up a review for that. I can't fucking wait to see that. I'm glad that Brian Singer is back at the helm. Really excited. So, yeah, guys, uh, hit me back with your thoughts, comments. Uh, please like, comment, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more reviews. And let me know what you thought of Godzilla. If you loved it, hated it, thought it was okay. I fucking loved it, and I know you guys will. So, um, you guys take care. Peace. Have a good day. And uh, I'll see you guys with some more videos soon. Bye.